Today is the day for fireworks and celebration. It's the 4th of July, a special day in the life and history of our country. Declaring our independence from England, the founding fathers left their mark and what they hoped would be freedom, a system of justice, and rights for all. And we continue to work and strive for more equality, more justice, and claiming the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness for everyone. Before the Founding Fathers, pilgrims and immigrants made their way across the ocean in search of a new way of life, in pursuit to worship God that was being denied them back home. They faced suffering, hardships, and danger and getting from there to here, and that also became the foundation of our country's history. The goal was to worship God, to practice one's faith in God, and to put their faith into action. And it is still the core of our faith to serve God. And so I share with you, <clears throat> excuse me, this morning, the stories of two women that I am privileged to know through the first appointment that I had on the southeast side of Indianapolis. And if these two ladies were standing in front of you, you wouldn't think there was anything special about them. They're, they're very normal and very ordinary looking people. Two women, one younger and the other older, who took God's message to serve to heart. Donna was a young mother who worked in an office of a school. She was a very good-natured and happy soul. And she was also one of the few people in the church that had children. And as pastors, we get a lot of mail and that comes in. And one day I received this brochure, and I handed it to her on Sunday morning. And I said, you know, here's something for you to look at. And tell me what you think. I mean, it's something about filling shoe boxes and given, to be given to children in third world countries who might not get anything for Christmas. And so a week later she came to me and she said, I want to do this. It was late in the year, but she got a few shoe boxes together, filled them up on her own, and drove to the next drop-off location. And while she was there, she picked up the video about Operation Christmas Child, and she talked with several other people there. And once again, she came to me and said, I want to do this through next year. And I said, well, you know, okay, how many boxes do we want to fill? I mean, we're a very small church of about 25 people. And she said, oh, we'll just do like 35 boxes. And I said, well, how about 50, just to make it challenging? Oh, no, she said, well, we'll just do 35. And every time she did, I countered with, let's do 50. So Donna began to hang out with shoe stores, getting to know managers, and taking any shoe boxes that they no longer needed. And we collected all kinds of toys and small items to fill those boxes. Another church member came to me and suggested that we take all our loose coins in the offering plate and put them toward postage, which was required for each box and which Donna was taking upon herself to pay. And so after a church packing party in the fall, Donna asked if I'd like to see her car, which was now filled and with the boxes and was ready to go to the next stop. And so I casually asked, well, you know, how many did we do? And sheepishly she responded, holding this one, well, with this one, we did 51. And I said, next year, we do 100. Well, working in a school, Donna got limited time off around the holidays. And so for Thanksgiving break, she and her son and her mother drove to Minneapolis to help with the final checking of the boxes before they were loaded onto the plane to be taken to their destination. I noticed instead of preparing or participating with her family in a big Thanksgiving turkey dinner with all the trimmings, Donna chose to drive to Minnesota and sort through boxes and drive back in four days. And as you can imagine, Donna came back on fire. Once the Holy Spirit ignites, that's about it. 
And so for another year, we saved shoe boxes and items to pack. And at that packing party, I asked Donna, you know, what's, what was the final count? And she said, well, we had done 115 boxes. But a woman from another church had just added another 13 to the pile. And so, not being content with sort of an odd number of amount, she took it upon herself to get seven more boxes, fill them to make it 135. Donna didn't do any of this to get any credit or to be on TV, but to serve God in putting others and their needs ahead of her own. And to serve, not to be served. Now, while Donna was a younger, well, young mother, Lurie was a great grandmother in her late 70s, a woman of God, as we say, of someone who had deep faith. And by the time I came to the church, Lurie's eyesight had deteriorated to the point she is legally blind. Now, she had magnifiers and she had machines at home to help with reading books, but it really was very limited amount of help for her. In August of 2005, Hurricane Katrina roared through the Gulf of Mexico, severely damaging the states of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. And like everyone else, we too prayed and sent funds through UMCOR to help for, to give help for people there. But one Sunday, Lurie came up to me, and she said, I've been praying, and I think God is nudging me to go to Mississippi to help with the relief efforts. Then she said, you know, I can't see the hammer and nail or lift heavy boxes, but the workers will be hungry and I can cook a meal. So we did the only thing we could do. We prayed over and consecrated Marie to work in Mississippi. Now the good news was she had a way to get there. The not so good news was she had no way to get home. And she was the least bit concerned about it. The Lord will provide. Her full trust was in God to see her through, to give her the strength for the work to be done, and to see her safely back home in Indiana. And sure enough, once she got down there, by the end of the week, a carload headed with her to Alabama, and someone there knew someone who was going to Tennessee, and someone there knew someone who was going to Kentucky, and her daughter came down and took, brought her home to brought her home to Indiana. And Lorraine shared her stories of what it was like. And a crate of apples suddenly show up one day. So they made apple crisp. And this dear, legally blind woman went to Mississippi when she didn't have to, to serve the workers a meal not to be served. As the mother and sons of Zebedee learned, when Jesus calls, it might not be to an easy task. It might be challenging. It might include suffering. But it will always bring us closer to being made more like Christ. So as we celebrate another 4th of July, Enjoy the fireworks and the outdoor meals with friends. Take a listen to your own heart sometime today. Where is Jesus calling or nudging you? And will you act on it? And will you seek ways to serve rather than to be served? Let us come to the table.